Hey guys, this is Pastor Scott, and I just wanted to, let me pull this a little bit closer so I don't have to talk as loud. Let me just sh share this to a couple groups. Hold on one second. I usually ask you guys to do this. Sorry if it's a little wavy. I got this up on the, the bed. Just uh, sharing to a few of my favorite uh, groups. So let's pray. Father, we ask that you bless this time, that you will speak to me and through me as I share this testimony. Uh, a step in the right direction is the word that you put on my heart, and I just want to share openly and plainly. Holy Spirit, have your way and be glorified today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So yeah, so God bless you guys. Hey, Jim, God bless you. Uh, let me read this scripture. Um, I just prayed, uh, but I wanted to share a testimony with you guys and encourage you even in this time. I don't know how to get that McPhee or whatever security system on my computer. If anyone knows how to do that, help. The operating system is a little strange back there. But James chapter 5 verse 16 says this. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And boy, oh boy, um, do I have a, a testimony to tell in regards to that. Let me see if I can uh, uh, get this out to you guys. Uh, we received some news uh, recently regarding a friend that we've been uh, uh, doing our best to help and to encourage in the right ways, actually, uh he was uh, one of our bandmates from back in the days, and uh, he's been out on the streets for, gosh, at least, I think, seven years or something like that. Uh, when I got out of prison in around 2012, I quickly got plugged into His Place Church in, a Westminster, or in Huntington Beach, and then we moved the church over to Westminster, and then eventually they got the, the His place Huntington Beach back as well but initially I started over there then started uh, serving and playing bass and then uh, teaching Sunday school and then right after that around 2013 I was hired as the associate pastor slash evangelist for a small church over there in Anaheim California and I was on fire for Christ just as I am right now hey Bonnie just sharing a little story with you guy about a praise report and testimony that just happened. So I'm just giving a little backstory. So I got out of prison, uh, started serving the Lord, started playing bass, uh, teaching Sunday school. The Lord had put it on my heart to uh, to teach and to preach, which was actually really hard because I played the bass guitar my whole life. So I kind of had to give that up. Um, and the Lord has me play every once in a while, and that's awesome. But I just love to get into God's Word and to share. So fast forward to 2013. Um, I was hired for the, to be the associate pastor and evangelist for uh, a local church in Anaheim. And then um, right after that, I was, uh, this is where this story started about a friend of mine. I was down in Santa Ana, California. Hey, George, uh, just sharing a testimony, uh, taking care of some health uh, issues, going to the doctor and such. And we happened to be by the old band studio in Santa Ana. And I didn't have a car at that time. I uh, was still just serving God and trusting him. And I was with a mother. She had let me borrow her car and went down there with me. And we were driving by the old band studio. And I heard this word, go get so-and-so. I'm not going to say his name. Um, and then I said, did you hear that? And uh, Mama says, no, what are you talking about? I says, I heard the words, go get. And uh, she said, no, I didn't hear that. I said, well, we got to go get him. And she says, okay, where is he? I says, well, the studio is here. Let's go by there and see if we can find him. So I just said a quick little prayer, Lord Jesus, help us to find uh, that person in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we went by the studio uh, the, where the band used to play, and he wasn't there. And then uh, after that, we were just kind of thinking, well, I've heard some reports that he was over here. A couple friends said they might have seen him out there, uh, spanging for change or whatever. And uh, so we decided to go over that area by the leading of the Holy Spirit, kind of the information that we had found. And uh, he wasn't there, but we found his car. <laughs> and then we saw a dog bowl on top of the car. And uh, I was like, well, I think this is his car. It looks like his car. And there's a dog bowl here. And he had a dog. And Everything seemed to line up, but he was nowhere in sight. But uh, being from the streets myself, um, 
And uh, being an ex-drug addict, I know the easiest way to find someone on the streets is ask someone on the streets. <laughs> so I was kind of walking around, and I saw a guy that looked like he might be homeless, had his backpack, and just check out their shoes and their fingers if they look dirty. And uh, you, you can tell pretty quickly who's uh, homeless, usually carrying their stuff with them. And I asked him, and he said, oh, yeah, where is this guy? And then uh, he said, oh, he's just right over there <laughs> with his dog. And so we went over there, and... Uh, there he was, and we invited him to come home with us and, and implored him to come home uh, to get sobered up and that we could uh, get him to church and get him plugged in. And he started to do well, was playing guitar with us, and we were all jamming, the, actually, the, my brother and him and me, and we were jamming in church and not on the punk rock stage anymore. It was, it was really cool. It didn't seem like he was going to get any better uh, too fast because he kept uh, backsliding. And uh, we kept him around as long as we could, a good four or five years. Had some uh, different things happen and such, and eventually came to a point when uh, we had uh, moved back here, the family house, me and my wife and my brother and his wife due to some circumstances in life, and, and we just couldn't have him around here anymore because we kept finding things that we shouldn't. And uh, just wasn't comfortable to, to have that kind of behavior around a wife. And um, then... We had to let him go, <laughs> and he tried to come back during this uh, coronavirus, and uh, we wanted to help him, and we actually had some differences of opinion here at the house as to some people wanted him to come back and others didn't, and actually got a little uh, frustrating here, and people got upset, and of course we wanted to help a friend out, but we also don't want to bring anything into the house or even out and around the house for that matter, maybe if he was to park outside and then the neighbors would get in trouble and yada, yada, yada. So long story short, this has been a long uh, process of praying and trying to help a brother out and got to the point where we just had to let him go. <laughs> and sorry, you can't come here, man. It's uh, maybe after this is over, but not right now. And uh, we had tried to take him up north. A friend of ours, a pastor friend of ours, Pastor Sam, had invited me and Diana last year to visit a retreat center up north. And uh, we took some pictures and posted them last year. It's absolutely beautiful. And we didn't really know what reason we were going up there just to see Sam, who we just left in Montana, and and uh, say hi. We It wasn't really, you know, come check the place out, but it's not functioning yet. It's being built and restored and it's a uh, run down and there's a lot of work that needs to be done and help that needs to be done up there. And, and, um, well, it was beautiful time. And we met, uh, Bobby up there and it was, it was a, it was a good time. So when we come back home and, and when I got back, I realized, oh yeah, well, maybe this person that we were trying to help out, um, can go up there. So we made arrangements with, uh, them up there because he was good in a particular trade, which would come in handy up there at the retreat center. And he's, yeah, 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 we'll go. Yeah, it sounds like the Lord's plan. And, but then excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse and ended up to the where he didn't go. And um, like I said, we got to the point where we had to let him go. Well, just recently, a couple weeks ago, he had contacted us and said, yeah, I'm interested in going. And can you find out? So I actually called the guy um, on another phone and got hold of him. He said, yeah, you can come up here. And then I told my brother, my friend, uh, yeah, everything's lined up. And I said, just figure out your, what you got to do to, to get up there or we'll take you up there or we'll rent a car and take you up there. Just whatever it is, do what you got to do and let's go. It's a, it's a green light, <laughs> you know? And, um, so then we didn't hear from him for a while. And then the, the guy up there said, yeah, what are we going to do? He's not showing up. And I don't know where he's at. And we haven't heard from him. And lo and behold, uh, about last week sometime, uh, beginning of the week, I think my brother had shared the testimony on Sunday, we got a call. And he called me and says, hey, man, I, I, said, I told him you, you just need to go. Whatever you do, rent a car, take your car, don't let those excuses from last time stop you just get up there up north to go to you know to prayer mountain hey pastor good morning from indo just go don't let that thing don't stop just get up there it's, it's you know and reach out well he called at the beginning of the week and says hey bro i'm all the way i'm in fresno <laughs> i'm already uh i hope it's okay if i could still go up there i says well i gotta call him and check and Let's figure it out. So we did again, and yeah, worked it out. And I called him, and he says, okay, uh, I, 
about four to six hours out from Fresno, should see him tonight. So, yep, he's on the way right now. Um, he can call when he gets into town. Yep, got my cell phone number. Everything's good to go. And um, Monday, Tuesday, whatever it was last week, didn't hear from him again. That guy Bobby called, said he's not there. Oh, man. Oh, and then we didn't know what happened. <laughs> Starting to stress out and stuff and been praying and praying. Check this out. All of us were praying. Some of us were fasting. And uh, I think it was Saturday we got a call from Bobby up north. It says, hey, man, I was out running some errands and I just got back to the ranch. And then there's this car here I never saw, and this, this guy I never met before, and his dog. I think you might know him. And then we just started praising God. I said, like, yes, yes, yes. Uh, he made it. He, I guess he stopped at Sacramento, um, was dilly-dallying around, just enjoying some freedom from the streets, in the different streets, and, but he was still on his way. And here's the other miracle. The place that he went is very hard to find. I mean, the, there's no navigator that works there. Cell phone coverage doesn't generally work there. Most people have to stop at the city uh, store and then ask or use the phone there and call Bobby to get in unless they've been there before. No one's ever made it. But our friend was going, he said the Holy Spirit was talking to him. He is a bit believer in the back, was in the backsliding state. Um, said the Holy Ghost was really speaking to him. He's the first person to make it to the ranch without having to stop at that store. I had told him, this is how you get there. You go off the, this freeway, exit, go right, and then when you get to the fork in the road, go right and keep going down, and then once you find that city store, then you drive for about eight more miles, and there'll be a road, and at that road, you turn right and go back about a, around a, about a mile, and the ranch will be on your left-hand side. Well, he was there waiting. He didn't contact anyone he just the holy spirit led him right to the ranch <laughs> amen and he's up there right now years i'm talking since 2013 and he was on the streets prior to that and now he's up there seeking help and we're just believing for miracles and that he's going to have a wonderful testimony he's going to stick with this so keep him in prayer that he stays up there he does have his car if he tries to get back in it the car breaks down in the name of jesus if he tries to leave the the Holy Spirit stops him. Put angels up around that place in the name of Jesus. So just pray that he will be delivered completely from that addictive behavior, the spirits that are associated with drugs and alcohol and all the such, and that the Lord will heal his mind for whatever that was that caused him. I know that he had a divorce, and that is a big pain in his side. Um, the Lord can help him with that. So there's your testimony for the day. I just had to share it from my heart. I like to try to do these on Mondays or Tuesdays sometimes. If so the Lord puts something on my heart or we hear a testimony at the service, though maybe you guys don't have to listen to the whole service and you wanted to catch just a part of it, um, here I am. So, man, I would just encourage you again with James chapter 5, verse 16. Check this out. Confess your faults to one another. And pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Amen. So let's just pray. Lord, if there's anybody here that uh, is struggling with something, or maybe they're in that, that uh, far away place from you, Lord Jesus, that you'll touch their heart right now where they're at, Lord Jesus, and that they will know that you care, and that, that they will know that they can come back. There's nothing that they can do. That you won't say I'm, you know, that if they ask for forgiveness, that you'll 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 turn your back on them, Lord Jesus. That you'll forgive them and that they can redo this and do it better this time. And if there's someone online right now or later that needs to come to Jesus for the first time and you've been rejecting Jesus and 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 not listening to the urging of the Holy Spirit and the preachers and pastors have been saying, you need to come to Jesus. That's where it starts, that you'll touch their heart right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you need to make that choice, I just ask that you raise your hand right now. I need Jesus every day. I <laughs> raise my hand and just repeat after me. This is just a simple prayer in line with Scripture. Romans chapter 9, verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And it also says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, just a few verses later, for all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Something to that uh, effect. All. The Lord is no respecter of persons. Anybody at any time can come to Jesus. 
and just pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry that I sinned. I ask you to forgive me. I confess to the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. From this moment forth, I will do my best to learn more about you and to walk in your ways. Not my ways, your ways. Please fill me with the Holy Spirit now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer, contact us. Amen. Get to a church. Even if you can't get to a church physically right now because of the COVID-19, that's fine. They'll be open soon in the name of Jesus. Log on and watch a good Bible preaching church. Make sure they preach it from cover to cover. And even if they don't, who cares? Just get there, soak yourself in the word of God, and learn for yourself. Amen. Give us a call at 1-855-70-JESUS or log on to our website and let us know that you just made the decision for Christ or you came back and we'll be happy to help you. Amen. We even have a Bible uh, discipleship plan on our website. Just go to oneaccordcrusades.com, click on the tab and drop down and it says the plan. And it has a simple one, two, three Bible reading plan. A couple steps that you can do real simple. Basically what I've been doing since I was in prison and it's helped keep me out of prison. Amen. And that's not just prison by the authorities, but prison of the devil in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance over your life. Amen. God bless you guys. I, I could go on, on all day, but I'm not. I love you. Uh, take care. God bless.